We interrupt this program with some breaking news. Theater is returning. I repeat, theater is returning. Grab your tickets and get on down to your nearest tunes. It's time to celebrate that band. Let's go. Tell you why I want to dance. Hear the sweetness of the music. I like the sweetness of the music. But that ain't why I want to dance. Something thumping in the bass That bump I'm bumping under music That thump I'm thumping under music Is all I need to start me off I don't need nothing else to start me off Beat out that rhythm on a drum Beat out that rhythm on a drum Beat out that rhythm on a drum, Beat out that rhythm on a drum. And I don't need no tune at all Beat me that rhythm on a drum Beat me that rhythm on a drum I'm on a drum, and I don't need no tune at all. Now this heart is beating fast, and that's a rhythm I can dance to. I'm mighty glad I got a chance to, with this big heart that's beating fast. Tomorrow morning, let it rain. Tomorrow morning, let it pour. Night was in the groove together Ain't gonna worry about stormy weather Gonna kick old trouble out the door Beat out that rhythm on a drum Beat out that rhythm on a drum Beat out that rhythm on a drum And kick old trouble out the door Beat me that rhythm on a drum Beat me that rhythm on a drum Beat me that rhythm on a drum And kick old trouble out the door Kick him out the door Kick him out the door Kick him out the door, kick him out the door The Lucille Lortel Awards were created to celebrate outstanding achievement off-Broadway. This year, we have only one award to give out, and the 2021 Lucille Lortel Award goes to you. The writers, the actors, directors, choreographers, designers, musicians, stage managers, crews, producers, theaters, their staffs, and audiences who make Off-Broadway so special. Here's to the moment where the lights dim and we can once again come together and experience the power of storytelling. The curtains closed and the lights went off. Theaters were forced to shut down as coronavirus cases spread throughout the region. The road to recovery could be the Broadway League today canceled its summer season. All theaters would be shut down as New York tries to contain the novel coronavirus. What do I miss and what am I most looking forward to? I miss that feeling of being at the first table read and watching a play grow and develop over the course of sometimes years. What do I miss most during the COVID crisis? I miss my colleagues. My favorite part of being in a play has nothing to do with performance, has nothing to do with feeling the energy of a live audience, has nothing to do with acting. The interaction with people of all kinds. My favorite part is being part of a cast, being part of an ensemble, being part of a family. Creative people, actors, writers, designers, directors, choreographers, all of those people who make shows happen. I miss most importantly the joy of a group of people coming together to create something new and then sharing it with our audience.
Hi, I'm Quincy Tyler Bernstein. Harry Condon. Stephen McKinley Henderson. The Max Von Essen. Kate Forbes. Tracy Chimo Palero. Eliza Colon Zayas. I'm Sora Joy Ross. Tanya Pinkins. Kristen Schultz. John Andrew Morrison. Joel Perez. Jason Tam. Bill Irwin here. My name is Edmund Donovan. I'm Annie Funky. I'm Iris Barr. I'm Adam James. My name is Juan Castano. This is Francis Jew. I'm Judy Kuhn. Hi, my name is Kylie Kuyoka. Annette O'Toole. Jeremy Seamus. Larry Owens. How do I describe Off-Broadway in one word? Community. Original. Essential. Essential. Essential is how I'd describe it. Essential. I think every actor would enjoy making certain that their journey includes several stops Off-Broadway. How would I describe Off-Broadway in one word? Exciting. Art. Courageous. I know it says one word, but for me, it, it sustains sanity. I just want to say that. Um, adventurous. Special. Audacious. Risky. Community. During the pandemic, I learned to grow potatoes in pots in my backyard. During the pandemic, I learned to truly put myself in someone else's shoes. I went full Jane Alexander, and I learned bird calls. It was so fulfilling. It was, it was very exciting. I got maybe... 10 little potatoes, and one of them was like the size of a quarter, and they were delicious. I learned to start my own business, which is really exciting. Singing telegrams by Sora, and that is really empowering. Scrubbed them, steamed them, put the butter on them, and they were really good. My memory of the night is a bit hazy. I think the thing that I will um, remember the most about uh, winning the Lord Tell Award was that it was a tie. My memory of receiving the award is kind of all a blur because I was so nervous. They announced Christian Boyle's name first, and then they announced my name. And I ran up there and I gave my speech and I was sweating so bad. I just remember when they called my name, I was in a state of shock. What? <laughs> Do I, what do I do? Do I go up there? Did that just, what? My undershirt, my regular shirt, and my suit jacket. Yes, yes, go up, go on stage. I was able to bring my mother and it was Mother's Day. And for the first time, she got to see me win an award. I remember most about the night being in the company of all those other wonderful nominees. I wrote a speech out just in case I won. I wasn't sure. So they announced my name and I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, that's so great. And there was kind of this pause where nothing was happening. But my brother was like, dude, don't write a speech because that's like so lame. And I'm sitting right next to Danny Burstein, who I'm like privately fangirling over. And he's like, wait, is that you? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, you have to go up there. So I wrote out a speech anyway and I shoved it in my bra. <laughs> and I was kind of like, maybe I won't have to use this. I was sort of secretly hoping that I wouldn't have to. Apparently I had just not thought of, oh, what if I win? Like the thought never occurred to me that I had to talk or anything. I'm sure I gave a deer in the headlights speech, but um, I remember being a wonderful evening. They said my name and my best friend was sitting next to me and she like squeezed my hand so hard and I like jumped out of my seat and I, when I got up, Onto the uh, stage, I pulled the speech out of my boobs, and all I could think of was I just took a piece of paper out of my tits. My memory of the night is a bit hazy. We had got a little, we'd had a few pre uh, uh, award drinks. A short memory of receiving the Lucille Lortel Award. I have to say it was an out-of-body experience for me. I'm a huge Orfe and Andy Carl fan. They are a Broadway super couple. And so when they announced my name, <laughs> I was also just like, Orfe and Andy Carl said my name. <laughs> I um, remember hearing my name and not being able to move. And my name was mentioned and I sort of went into like an out of body experience. I couldn't really believe it was happening. I think I left my body. And then I have a horrible memory of being so shocked that receiving it, I just spewed a, 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 a list of expletives. Expletives, expletives. I give a, an award tonight to my very close friend, Terence McNally, because 
lips together is a wonderful play, and also because Terrence has more anxiety about writing a play than any writer I know. <laughs> Terrence, before sitting down to write a play, does all his mail, pays all his bills, <laughs> tries to listen to every CD in his house that he hasn't listened to, which is quite a bit to do. He then works up his anxiety and begins thinking, Lynn Meadow hates me, the William Morris Agency hates me, my mother Doc from Texas hates me, Nathan Lane hates me, what am I going to do? And then at around four in the morning, sweating, he begins writing a play, and inevitably these plays are always wonderful. Hello there, Pam Goldberg, Equity member since 1964. I am an actress who has earned a living solely from the theater. I'm coming to you from my apartment here at Manhattan Plaza. The Lucille Lortel Awards people asked me to go through the Off-Broadway Safety Pledge. I'm an actress very concerned with safety. I've injured myself in every single show I've ever done. Not unusual. In fact, I keep all my old accident reports in this binder. I like to go through them sometimes because they bring back good memories. But listen, I want to work, you want to work, and you want to see a show, and I want to see a show. So let's not waste any time and go through these safety procedures and see how they measure up. Number one, to follow all guidelines given by the CDC. Well, that's a very good place to start, as Rogers and Hammerstein would say. Number two, contactless ticketing. Oh, this is great. I'm all for it. Why don't you lower the prices by $20 while you're at it? Number three, contactless concessions. Not quite sure how that would work, would they? Like throw popcorn at you. Contactless merchandise. That's fine. Mail me the mug. Listen, I'm wearing this to make a point. While we're on the subject of contactless, I really want to re let's rethink the stage door, at least for a while, because I don't want to, I, I mean, no one wants a selfie with someone dressed like this. Well, thanks again to the Lucille Lortel Awards people for having me. This was fun. I've never won a Lucille Lortel Award yet. Uh, I'd love to play Lucille Lortel. There is a resemblance. Thank you again. She was a Wild West figure with a Wild West figure. What do I miss most about theater since it's been on pause? I miss being in a room with other people. I miss the intimacy of a live performance, especially in smaller theaters and performance spaces. Well, right now, I'm missing all the in-between moments we have with each other. Breaking through the rehearsal room, running into friends in the hall, catching up and changing ideas, and maybe even gossiping a little in each other's offices. That's when all the real work gets done. We all know that. I miss that magical moment between when the house lights dim and the stage lights first go up. The people. I miss people so much, I cannot even begin to tell you. I miss rehearsing. I miss teaching dance class. I miss taking dance class. I miss the audience clapping, crying. That's the thing that I have missed the very most. Uh, I mean, I produce plays and you find uh, I always have one standard of, of work. I would do the same thing downtown in my small theaters. I have five small theaters in one building in, in, in Greenwich Village, as I would do on Broadway or in the park. There's, there's, no, there's no, not a double standard. I say, well, I'm gonna do this in a commercial way. I don't know what that means. I mean, we either do it well or we don't do it well. What do I most look forward to once theater reopens? Sitting down in my seat with my sippy cup of wine, playbill in hand, catching up with friends. Them. Attending the show with friends. And then that moment when the house goes to half and the lights dim and you escape. Using the social aspect of the theater to catch up with friends. I'm really excited about new ways forward, about experimenting, about being really thoughtful and holistic when thinking about our community. I really always look forward to like just what type of shows are going to come out, what type of entertainment there's going to be, and you know, seeing that expressed, I love Off-Broadway. And about really implementing everything that we've been talking about during the pandemic through the art itself. When the pandemic is over, I want to bake my famous chocolate chip cookies and bring them to tech. I can't wait for that. I am David Dorfman. This is Devon on Janky. My name is Susan Strauman. My name is Annie Tip. Erica Schmidt. Hi, I'm Rick Cooperman. And I'm Jeff Cooperman.
during the pandemic, I learned to make a traditional New Zealand pavlova. I learned to do several things. Operate an analog drum machine. I started learning the ukulele. I cried about everything. I started playing Beatles songs on my ukulele and my G-string broke. I read New Yorkers cover to cover. During this pandemic, I read Apollo's Arrow by Nicholas Christakis. And I read The Plague by Camus. I couldn't get groceries delivered, so I went on a site that supplied restaurants, and I thought I was getting one chicken breast, and 35 chicken breasts showed up. During the pandemic, I learned to sew masks, 200 of them. Please share a short memory, 30 seconds or less, of receiving your Lartel Award. We remember having just received the award and then walking off stage right and having this collective flashback to 2016 when we stood in that exact same spot as we choreographed the opening number to the Lortel ceremony. I remember the night of the Lortel Award being so nervous. I forgot to mention my wife and son's names, so thank you so very much, Lisa Race and Samson Race Dorfman. Winning a Lortel Award was insane uh, and very surprising and really exciting. And when they announced my name, I remember all of them sort of descending on me in a group hug. It was so exciting and beautiful and one of my fondest memories. That was cool. It was really special. It was special. I'll never forget it. Contact came from a very pure place. A lot of times dance is not celebrated as much as it should be. For it to be recognized by the folks at the Lortel Awards. So I was quite honored and flattered and thrilled.
I thought I would just get the numbers increased. I was thinking about parity with the male practitioners of the theater. But I began to think, well, you know, it doesn't matter so much about the numbers. It matters about the quality, and it matters what they're saying, and it matters if they're given an opportunity. I missed performing. I missed performing live for people. I just for live people. I've been doing so many self-tapes and... <sighs> During the pandemic, I learned to endure. To me, Off-Broadway is missed, desperately missed. This time last year, I was enormously flattered by the Lucille Lortel nomination, but honestly, I didn't pay it much mind because there was so much more important stuff going on in the world. The pandemic, um, the entire shutdown of our industry, um, the health crisis, Black Lives Matter, protests on the street, the surge in violence against Asian Americans. So I really wasn't thinking about awards. During the pandemic, I cried about a lot of things. <laughs> um, how much time do you have? Honestly, I could go on and on. I cried about a lot. Um, I cried about my friends losing their parents to COVID. I cried about the death of my father and the losses of so many of my friends. Uh, it's been a hard year for all of us. Uh, I cried about George Floyd and everything that happened after that. But I was at a rally when a total stranger came up to me and she told me how grateful she was that I had been nominated and grateful that I had been nominated for a play that meant so much to her. I'm so grateful to her for reminding me that representation matters, that what we do matters. Okay, do you mind oh, whoa, telling whoa, whoa, whoa. me why I'm under arrest, sir? Why, why am I under arrest, sir? When the pandemic is over, I'm looking forward to seeing what Off-Broadway does to respond to what just happened this last year, year and a half. Hope is on the way. When the pandemic is over, I just want to be surrounded by my family from near and far. Um, yeah, I just long, I long for that moment when we can all be together again. 
Okay, thank you. Um, I cried uh, just out of basic narcissistic needs. <laughs> like celibacy, I cried over celibacy. Not for it, because of it. Hey, I'm Woody. My roommates all left New York, which left me scrambling for a place to live. But fortunately, I got an apartment. The rent is great, and the place is huge. Also, I've got a ton of new roommates now who all work in off-Broadway theater. It's cool. I've never lived with artistic types before, but I guess the theaters are still closed, so they're home a lot. A lot. Samantha's a stage manager, which is actually great. Torch Hart, love this thing. She highlighted all my parts in pink, and I got a little smiley face. Did I get any mail? Under what name? Woody, I live here. Can I see some photo ID? So Barb is a box office manager. We do not get along. How many seats? One, I, I just wanna watch TV. Ah, TV. I can get you two seats together right up on the sofa. FYI, there is an obstructive view. Uh-huh, yep, that's two seats up front. There is a booking fee. Okay, thank you very much. Sorry, we sold out. But, I think you... Okay, I guess, I guess she's closed. But, I did get two comps for breakfast. The roommate I interacted with the most, I'd have to say Susan. Were you here last night? Yeah. I'll be here tonight and tomorrow night, too. Oh, somebody's a fan. Sorry, that's not your seat. I'm sorry, sir. You're gonna have to turn that off. Why? No texting, no talking, no phone calls of any kind. But there's no one here. I'm going to the bathroom. It's past the salon on the left. I know. Paul is a prop master. I actually haven't met him yet, but his presence in the apartment is inescapable. Mm. Prop beer! Paul! Is that a real gun on the couch? It's a real gun that I'm converting to a prop gun. One of my new roommates, Eric, he's a lighting designer. Entrance, character spotlight on Woody. Hmm, I'm getting a lot of shadows. Can we get Phil in here? He gave me a really warm welcome. But he does contribute to the drama around the apartment. Hey mom, what's up? The basement flooded? Oh my god, that's terrible. Don't. Hold on, mom. Hey, what's with the light? I don't know, mate. You sounded so sad about the basement flooding. I thought the blue would help capture your emotional undercurrent. Wait a minute. Were you listening in on my conversation? You seemed angry. I guess you could say my relationship with Eric is pretty on and off. You don't have to black me out on every joke. Okay, do you want the slow fade? No! Firstly, I'm lucky enough to find that American audiences like my plays. So I get a lot of chances to work there. But I also find it hugely stimulating and provocative. It is in terms of our designers our lighting designers, our set designers, costume designers, sound designers. Now in America, those are disciplines which have reached an incredibly refined point. They are major aspects of theater life in, in, in America. And I find that the collaboration I have with my designers in America is an enormous stimulus and provocation to me in, in honing and keeping my craft alive. My name is Tracy Christensen. Hello, my name is Alan Edwards. Hi, I'm Brian Ronan. My name is Lauren Helfern. What I miss most about theater since it's been on pause. I missed a lot of life events. I have a big family and uh, usually in the summer, uh, some somewhere we'll all get together, as so many who can make it get together. I didn't really miss them because they were on Zoom. But it's about 30 people or so. And it's just a great 
family event. But it's not the same as being uh, with your friends and family in person. Naturally, we weren't able to do it. We have a lot of older folks in the family, so we weren't able to pull it off last, last summer, so I missed that. What I miss most about theater, since it's been on pause, is the community. I miss being with other people in fittings. I miss being with other people in the rehearsal room and in the theater. I just, I miss my community. The hotel was really the first award I ever won for sound design. I think we go through our lives and we don't expect to hear our name at an award ceremony. When I thought, just sit back and enjoy because there's no way you're going to win. One interesting memory of the awards in 2018 was just hearing my name uh, be called. My name was called and the first thought that went through my mind was, how do I climb over all of these people gracefully? And uh, that was an honest shock. I didn't really know awards existed for sound. And it was a lot of fun and a lot of hard work. And I'm glad it worked out. And I'm very glad somebody was paying attention. So thank you, Lucia Lortel. I ate surprisingly well. My wife and I, who both cook, ate 90 eight percent of our own cooking for the first time in our lives. I ate my feelings, which was really horrible for my waistline. Too many sour cream donuts from Peter Pan. But I seem to have that a little bit under control now. When the pandemic is over, I wanna hug everybody I see. I live alone and I haven't hugged anybody in a year. I wasn't very involved with the downtown movement and the happenings and, the, and what was going on at Judson, at the Judson Church. And I wasn't really very aware of my mama either. I wasn't aware of the public theater because my aunt took me to see no place to be somebody at the public theater. So I knew that she took me to see a night of all black actors doing black poetry in Central Park at the Delacorte. So I got to see those, and I knew the public theater, and I knew black work at the public theater. That's why I associated the public theater with black people, because that's where I went to see the black people.
Hi, everybody. I'm Vivi Newirth, a vice chair of the Actors Fund. And as I say in almost every email I've written this year, I hope this finds you and yours all safe and sound. I am so glad to join the celebration of the 2021 Lucille Lortel Awards, honoring previous recipients and treasured moments from the past, and a huge, huge thank you to the Lucille Lortel Foundation for their generous, ongoing support of the Actors Fund. The Actors Fund has been helping professionals in the performing arts and entertainment industry for more than 130 years. I know. Throughout this past year of unprecedented difficulty, we've helped more than 40,000 members of our community in need. As life and challenges during this pandemic are constantly shifting and confounding, the Actors Fund has held steady. We've confidently and seamlessly continued to provide programs that support the unique needs of everyone who works in the arts. We are continuing to offer social services, health insurance enrollment, housing resources, career guidance, emergency financial assistance, and on and on. The fund is truly a safety net for our community. Tonight, as we virtually celebrate the world of Off-Broadway, please remember that the Actors Fund is here for dancers, dressers, stage managers, songwriters, stage hands, designers, musicians, directors, just everyone in the performing arts, even and including actors. We know that the need for our services will continue to grow in the coming months and we are ready and committed to serve our community every step of the way. To learn more or to donate, please visit actorsfund.org forward slash Lortel. Thank you so much. My name is David Kale. This is Will Eno. Hi, I'm Jessica Blank. And I'm married to her. And my name is Eric Jensen. This is JT Rogers. My name is Jonathan Tolan. When I got both nominations, I was just, just overjoyed. So appreciated. I remember the moment so clearly when I received my Lortel Award for Oslo. This is our Lucille Lortel Award. It holds a place of honor in our house. It's in 2003 for the Exonerated. I remember the night I won the Lortel. I remember a lot of things from that night, and I believe they're all true. I was sharing the award with Michael Urey um, because he was the actor in the show that I wrote. He was in Chicago about to open the show there, so I got to accept as if it was all me. It was an amazing evening, and I remember feeling so grateful and it was a lovely evening. Our first date was in the Lucille Lortel Theater because Eric was acting in a play there and I came to see it and he took me out afterwards. Three years later, we were sitting in the same theater receiving our uh, Lucille Lortel Award for the Exonerated for Unique Theatrical Experience. I found myself stunned simply because I had been working in our profession for 20 some years and had never received anything. I have no memory of what I said in the fog of shock. During the pandemic, um, I learned how... Well, during the pandemic, I learned to... Play the mandolin. During the pandemic, I learned to be patient. I learned how to take care of squirrels. Um, because most, most everybody was sort of homebound. I would take little walks to Tompkins Square Park, which was which is a couple of blocks from my apartment. Uh, I started feeding the squirrel, got to learn a lot about squirrels. I think I might have learned to be a little bit better writer, I think, I hope. Um, I know my daughter learned to ride a bike, and that's very measurable. And I hope I learned how to write, how to write. Good evening. Welcome. 
welcome to the third annual Lucia Lortel Off-Broadway Awards. My name is Lynn Meadow, and I'm the artistic director of the Manhattan Theater Club. Thank you. And I am very proud to have the job of Mistress of Ceremonies for this very special evening. As you know, these awards honor achievement in the off-Broadway arena. But I think it would be most fitting to begin the evening by saluting the person who created these awards, the person whose lifetime represents achievement in the off-Broadway arena, to Lucia Lortel. I pay tribute and homage. Thank you for having us. Hi, I am Peter Dushan. This is Adam Guan. During the pandemic, I missed... I miss the way an actor or a piece of music can shift the air in a room. And I miss feeling that together with a group of people. During the pandemic, I missed my friends cooking. During the pandemic, I miss my parents. Still miss them. Would like to see them. Describe Off-Broadway in one word. Radical. Percolating. 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 Off-Broadway is the best. I think that's two words. Uh, during the pandemic, I learned how to camp. Became a camper. My husband and I bought a car and we went to the middle of nowhere. It's great. Please share a short memory of receiving your Lortel Award. I received my Lortel last year. Uh, in a pandemic. The night we won the Lortel was totally amazing and wonderful. It was completely unexpected. We got to accept the award. We went downstairs for the photos. Our cast from the second stage production had all already found out, texted each other, and there was an impromptu celebration at a nearby bar. A totally impromptu, wonderful way to uh, see people we loved and loved making up a show with. What do I look forward to when theater comes back? I look forward to running into people I know without planning it ahead of time. Which leads me to when the pandemic is over, I want to go visit my parents, go visit my family and spend some time with them. When the pandemic is over, I want to go to the theater. The theater space is like the main street of our community where you get to see people and catch up with people that we know and love and love. I'm Daryl Roth. I'm Jamie DeRoy. I'm Mia Moravis. What do I miss most about theater since it's been on pause? What do I miss most about the theater since it's been on pause? Everything. The thing I miss the most with theater on pause is milling about in the lobby and waiting for them to open the doors and let you in to find your seat. It's easy for me to say, it's the people and what I like to call my theater family. And then sitting there in great anticipation of the curtain rising. Those are such joyous moments that they're just indescribable. What do I look forward to most once theater reopens? Audiences gathering together for the most primal reason of hearing stories told. Going to the theater getting dressed up for the theater. Experiencing something transformative. The feeling of the connection between the actors on stage and the audience members. Is seeing everybody collected in one place to experience in their own way. Having a, a meal with somebody afterwards to talk about what we've just seen. There is nothing like it. I could talk about that all night, every night. When the pandemic is over, I want to safely hug everyone I see. Hug my grandchildren. Going to the Lortel Awards. Be in the theater most nights. To the Drama Desk Awards, to any awards, the Tony Awards. Getting dressed up and feeling like a person again. And have family dinners together again. I look forward to seeing all of you in a theater soon, soon. I miss that moment when the house lights begin to fade and there's this anticipation in the audience and this expectation 
that something magical is about to happen. I want that back. There are sights and sounds so many have been waiting for. Shows returning to New York City. When the pandemic is over, I want to hug and kiss all of my loved ones and friends. I would say my theatrical silver lining during quarantine was being able to play 2D in Meet Me in St. Louis for the Irish Rep and being able to collaborate with various actors, even from home, to create the amazing virtual production. When the pandemic is over, I look forward to wrapping my arms around my dear friends. I want to see my grandma. I want to give her a big hug. Seeing them and getting back to seeing lots of off Broadway theater every night. Pandemic is over. I want my kid to play with other people because um, my shtick is getting real old. I want to go to a big, fancy theater party where I walk in and immediately feel like an imposter. When the pandemic is over, I want to cut my hair and I want to do what everybody wants to do. Come back to New York and be on the stage and go to the theater and be with my friends soon. I want to hug every one of my friends. I want to get back on stage. Being in a room full of some friends maybe, but many strangers, and then by the end of the show, uh, being all united by what we just saw. When this pandemic is over, I just want to go to a nightclub and dance surrounded by people. I am so looking forward to attending my first opening night of whatever it may be. Just anything, just, I just wanna dance. And just being in a room filled with tons of people that are all there to celebrate the creative birth of a show. When the pandemic is over, I want to go to a theater and see a play and then get on the subway and go home. After the pandemic, I really want to sit in a theater and be transported to another world. How do I describe Off-Broadway in one word? Intimacy. Adventure. Tenacious. Fearless. Challenging. Real. Resourceful. Courage. Nurturing. When the pandemic is over, I want to go to more shows. I cannot wait until Off-Broadway opens back up so that I can like go and support everyone's different expression of like what they went through during the pandemic. It's all a start as the place known as the city that never sleeps finally starts to reawaken. You ask what I have learned during the pandemic. Well, you know, same old, same old. Southern Comfort at the Public, we were in the Ansbacher Theater, which is my favorite theater at the Public. And so to be there, I was, I felt so lucky to be playing the part of Robert Eads. And uh, every single performance, it felt like it was reverential, being so absolutely happy. After I won the Lucille Lortel Award, I, I went backstage and I was holding on, hold on. I was holding on to the award. There was a big party afterwards. It was lovely. And also that night, they got Osama Bin Laden. So I was celebrating, meeting these incredible people, and then someone's like, they got Osama, Osama Bin Laden. And I was like, what? The room itself was just electric. It was the season where Hamilton was still off Broadway. And it was an amazing season all around. I love collaborating. For so many of us, I think that's why we work in theater and the arts. I miss feeling a part of a team. It's, it's wild to think that I haven't seen some of my teammates since last March. During the pandemic, I learned to do calligraphy and painting from watching YouTube. 